All right, episode two. How are you feeling, Sam? You know what? I'm doing fantastic. Preseason has somehow come and gone. I don't know where the time has gone, but heading into regular season now and getting ready to get things at Iowa City kicking up into high gear. How about you, Jordan? How's everything? It's going good. Same here. Ready for our first game. Cincinnati comes Thursday. I know probably on the front of everyone's minds as episode one came out, Beep test scores, big part of last episode. How did you do? I remember obviously listening back to the last episode. I was like, oh, we run it tomorrow. And that now feels like three years ago. Don't know how that happened, but beep test went well for me personally and for the team this year, which is really awesome to see. Uh, myself, I got a 48. So pretty happy with that going into season and crazy to think that that was something we were stressed about about three weeks ago. And now that we're here and things are happening. How about you? How'd everything go for you? Pretty good. We actually ran it like first day of practice, which nobody was really expecting. Everyone was really fit going into the season. So we're happy about that. Personally, I got a 40, no 48, but I'm happy with my score. No schmuck there. Um, and like you said, I believe last episode, always expect the unexpected. Turned around and running a day one. You're like, oh, we don't run it until like two weeks in. So I bet that was a bit of a surprise for you. Always, always. Yeah, that's uh, been the biggest part about growing up. I'm prepared to be surprised now, I guess. Speaking of surprises, this is the Big Life Podcast. We are talking about all things Big Ten, college soccer, Big Ten Conference. A lot has happened in the Big Ten Conference since we last talked. Um, Frankly, a little bit too much for me to even process. So Jordan, what are your initial thoughts on everything that's happening right now? I have I have very, very mixed emotions. Mainly, I'm just a bit confused with how everything's going to work out in the end. Um, just kind of a bystander here as we're watching all the craziness come down. Um, but yeah, the conference realignment, it's been crazy. We have some new additions to the Big Ten Conference. As of right now, we have four. By the time this episode comes out, who knows what that will look like. But right now we added Oregon, Washington, South Carolina, and UCLA. Not South Carolina, USC. And you know, I can't even keep up anymore. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, that's right. Actually, South Carolina, all the SEC, we're just one giant conference now. Yeah, we added we added four new teams. Um, and those will come into effect starting next year. So I'll have the opportunity to play against all of them. Unfortunately, Samuel will be gone. But, you know, so next season will look completely different. It's crazy i think you know there's a lot of speculation about what this is going to look like i think for football and financially this is a really great thing bring in these conferences you're going to have really strong top schools and you're bringing them all together in terms of your soccer aspect i'm not really sure how this travel is going to work out or play out if they're going to keep a big 10 tournament in the end or not um softball baseball i'm not sure what they're gonna do if you're having to travel you have multiple games now you're gonna be gone for weeks at a time i mean how do you really pull that off i have no idea but next year i'm interested to see you know it's honestly really weird being someone who's seeing this all go down in the conference and know that i'll be graduated before it happens it's a different outlook on everything frankly because in a way it doesn't affect me which is really weird to think about but you know, I'm ways it's so exciting. I mean, you have UCLA, USC, Oregon, Washington joining the Big Ten Conference. UCLA naturally being the national champions last year. This now, in my personal opinion, bumps the Big Ten to probably the best college soccer conference in the country, which is exciting. It's so cool to be a part of that. However, like you said, there's a lot of ins and outs that need to be figured out. You know, there's different rumors going around about what's going to happen. We, of course, have no inside information about what that might even look like ourselves. Nothing. And it's exciting and it's nuts all at the same time. And, you know, from so many different perspectives, it's soccer wise, it's great. You're playing against the best of the best. And frankly, who doesn't want to do that? I've had the honor about playing UCLA twice now in my career. Both have been really, really good games and fun games to play in. And it's great to mix different styles of soccer. You know, one thing I think about soccer is it's very regional in how games are played. And if we're going to the classroom of Sam real quick here, we have the West Coast, who, in my opinion, is very technical soccer. Very pretty. 1v1. Finesse. They're ready to go. Then we go to the East Coast. Very similar to the West Coast. We have a bit of edge on our shoulder. We got a bit of chip on our shoulder. But it's possession based. It's, you know, build play, it's possession, it's attacking, it's all these different things. You go down south, it's athletic, it is combative, it is ready to go. 
And somehow in the middle of the giant Midwest, you got somewhere in between. And I think every single school has a different identity, whether, you know, I know, frankly put, Iowa leads the Big Ten in yellow cards every year. Something that happens. Uh, weird fact that we do but, know, but it's combative, it's aggressive, but it is still finesse and technical somehow. So combining these different styles all into one conference, I think is going to be a really interesting way to look at things and see how things shake out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's a really, really good way of putting it. Very positive outlook on it. And I completely agree, you know, in terms of uh, level of competition, the Big Ten just, I became number one in, in my mind. We are going to be a very, very competitive school. You're going to mean that much more, especially when you're looking to make tournament rounds, things like that. The logistics of it all, you know, I just, I get to just show up where they tell me to. So um, speculating is a little bit of fun, a little bit stressful, but in the end of it's just soccer. So it's okay. a really, really let good me, way. Let me ask you the big question that I feel like it's on a lot of observers' minds. You're a student athlete. Yourself, you're a biomedical engineer major. You know, you're super involved in your academics and everything that you're doing. How do you think it's going to affect the soccer school balance? Yeah, yeah. I think that's where a little bit of my hesitation comes with a lot of these statements. Um, well, the soccer aspect is amazing and you get to compete at this high level, the travel and that extra level of commitment that you have to put into everything, um, it's going to wear on you. I think it makes it a lot harder to have that balance. If I'm being completely honest, you're going to have to be gone for longer periods of time in order to pull off this, you know, big difference in terms of your uh, distance, you know, between schools, things like that. The saw video, the Mizzou football coach going around where I think he sheds light on a lot of the maybe not so positive areas of this where it's going to affect the student athletes. Um, and I don't I don't really know. I'm sure we have so much in the Big Ten. We have so much support in terms of our academic advisors. You know, you have your study tables, you have things like that. At the end of the day, like we're all going to be OK. It's just going to be an adjustment period. Maybe things do get a little bit harder in terms of that balance. Um, I just, I have no idea what this is going to look like. I think the academic portion will get figured out in the end, but it's going to take a lot more of that discipline from your student athletes in order to be able to pull off maybe those harder majors that they're, you know, striving to achieve in the classroom. So absolutely. Well, speaking of all of this, Jordan and I have set a goal and we do believe that we're going to try to get a UCLA, a USC, some kind of student athlete from that side of the coast onto this podcast. That way we can talk all things from their side, conference realignment, joining the Big Ten, what that might look like for them. So we're super excited about that. And this is definitely a story that I'm sure will be continuing throughout this season of the podcast, throughout this season of college soccer, as we find out more about how our new competition is going to end out. And so... Jordan, we talked about it earlier. Preseason has come and gone somehow, some way. Crazy. I mean, it just flew by. <laughs> Jesus. And I guess like for me, I'm trying to channel. I'm like, this is my last one. Like, so everything that like I'm doing, I'm like, I was like, this is my last time. And like, I can't get that too emotional because I will. But I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how to process everything while still move forward. So crazy times. But what is next for Michigan State? Michigan State will face Cincinnati Thursday, and then we have host Bowling Green Sunday as well. So we have two home games um, this week, and then we're off to Colorado the following week for two games out there. Uh, really excited to have that home opener, kind of get the season rolling. The preseason went maybe a little bit too fast for my comfort, but um, I'm really, really excited. Cincinnati Bowling Green should be two good teams that we're starting our season off with. So excited to get that rolling. How about you guys? Yeah, so on Wednesday, we will fly down to Florida. We play at Florida Gulf Coast on Thursday night and then come home and have our home opener on Sunday against UMKC. So once again, challenging team, Florida Gulf Coast, we know made an NCAA tournament last year. They're ready to go. They're revved up to play Big Ten school. So we're excited to go down there and face just a little bit of different competition. Speaking of competition, speaking of everything in preseason, I haven't talked to you in so long. I don't know how your exhibition games went. So real quick, run down to everyone what an exhibition game even is and how they felt for y'all. Yeah, so an exhibition game is essentially just a scrimmage. We play them, um, real game rules, everything like that. Um, but they don't count towards your conference standing or anything like that, your record. Um, we played Detroit Mercy, and then we went over to Loyola. So we won both of those games. Um, exhibition games are a good way to get everyone some minutes, have a lot of different looks, 
different players and you know different spots who works better with who um things like that so we got to see figure a lot of that stuff out as we head into Thursday for our first you know real game conference you know or not a conference game um but yeah so it went really really well um we're excited with what we kind of figured out what we saw two wins to start off the season not too bad how about you guys how'd you do no, nah, same thing here. So we went to South Dakota and then we went to Drake University in Des Moines and played our exhibition games. Once again, came out with two wins, which is always a good confidence boost. Seeing the ball hit the back of the net in a real game situation, I think makes anyone feel a bit good getting, you know, some clean sheets as well. You know, exhibition games, like you said, can be really interesting and exciting. You have, you know, for us, even our first one, we played three 30 minute periods. Just, you know, why not? build out we don't need to be playing full 45s yet no one needs to be playing 90 minutes yet that will come that'll come in october and that's when our legs really matter so you know building up to all of those different things and getting people on the field getting youngsters on the field transfers everything figuring out how to play together it's all crucial so getting those minutes and real reps and we had some fun moments in there too for example when we play at south dakota we actually have a girl on our team from california of all places to iowa and her twin sister crazy enough plays at South Dakota. So somehow the two girls from Southern Cal ended up in Iowa and South Dakota. So we had a little bit of a twin rivalry in their senior year against each other. Always fun to see that and be a part of that moment for them. And, you know, there's some good games. Drake is a great team out of Des Moines. It's kind of an Iowa rivalry. We play them, I feel like literally every fall and every spring. So finally went down to their place. They've been coming to Iowa city a lot and got some challenges and some good game minutes there. So been really good and excited for the real stuff to start counting, I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, another interesting part was that we, Detroit Mercy was a home game, then Loyola was a bus trip for us. So being able to figure all that stuff out, you know, before season starts, have that away experience as well was really beneficial. Um, we were talking to our coach and, you know, our season or our schedule this season is uh, kind of wild. We have a lot of bigger away trips, a lot of plane rides, but this and Michigan are only two actual bus trips this year. So that was nice to get one of them out of the way. And uh, Michigan's not that far at all from us. So um, that was really exciting to find out because so that's well, crazy. I thought we had it like to a low number, but I'm pretty sure we only bus to Wisconsin and then there's one other bus ride we have. So I thought we were lucky, but apparently you guys got it even better off than us. But yeah, we have three plane flights in non-conference as well we're going to florida and then to mississippi state and then out to virginia and then we'll fly when we have our away games at purdue and fly out to michigan so yeah that's crazy um okay we've been in preseason we're talking about preseason we're talking about how it flew by what does preseason look like for you guys yeah so for us um every day is a little bit different depending on the looks we're trying to get you still you're lifting um with your strength and conditioning coaches. So that's built into your schedule. We'll have a lot of team meetings in those first, you know, two weeks as we get ready for stuff, whether it's learning set pieces, learning, you know, our defensive tactics, attacking tactics, things like that, breaking down film, um, you know, a little bit of everything, just kind of learning the game and learning the way Michigan State plays it. So we'll have a lot of meetings built into the season. You'll still have your practices um, in season you're only allotted 20 hours a week with your coaches on the ball. So preseason though, you know, until that first game starts. So until Cincinnati for us, there's no limit on that amount. Um, so we take advantage of that. We get together as much as possible. And uh, you'll have, I think today we had like a two hour practice where, you know, you're just going at it. You had meetings built into it. And then we'll also have a lot of team meals, a lot of team bonding built into the stuff as well. We went bowling the other week. Um, and then we had noodles and company today. So a lot of, a lot of food involved in preseason. All right. Shout her out. Who's the best bowler on the Michigan state um, soccer team. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I pulled away with the win. I pull maybe twice a year and one of them every year is this. So I don't know how it really happened. I was just really feeling it. I beat Jeff by two points. Um, so that is my bragging rights for the rest of the year you know, drop the mic. <laughs> all right. All right. So when we play you guys, I'm just going to have to whisper into people's ear and be like, was Jordan lying when she said she beat you all at bowling? I'll, I'll, I'll throw the pot a little bit. I'll throw some tea. Like Jordan was talking mad, mad, bad on your bowling game. We'll call it out. We'll call it out. I got the scores to back it up. Though. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
Um, that's awesome. Yeah. Preseason is nuts. Uh, you're with your team all the time, you know, actually like weird personal thing in my life. I'm getting married in December, which is really weird to say out loud. And, um, I moved in with my fiance and everyone keeps asking me, they're like, how's living with Trey? I'm like, I don't see Trey. It's actually fine. Like I literally don't see the man. Um, so that's been super, super weird. But yeah, we wake up early, we have practice in the morning, and then you're with your team. I think I literally got to practice at seven o'clock today, we had lift and then practice. And I don't think I left the facility just with everything and hanging out and then goofing around like we do until about 1 one thirty, and then got home showered, and then realized I had team meal and I left at four o'clock to do individual film to then do team film to then have team dinner. And I got home about seven. So it's just one of those things that you're literally with your group of girls all the time. But also like as much as the time kind of gets a little like, oh, my God, I see these people every day. Like I still miss them when I'm gone. It's still all the laughs, all the jokes. Like, this is where the memories are made. You know, I fully believe when you leave college soccer, you don't talk about what happened in that one game, that one minute. You talk about the stupid stuff that happened at practice, the weird jokes that happened, everything. So as much as it's like ugh, preseason, it's also so much fun. We didn't go bowling or do anything like that, but uh, we've had a great blast. We've had a good time and it's crazy that it's now go time. Like this is where I don't want to say we weren't taking things seriously because of course we were, but a flip gets switched. Games matter. Moments matter. You know, letting in that one goal on a corner kick that you may have let in an exhibition game that didn't really matter at practice. You know, it's like, okay, we'll learn. They now can decide games. They now can frankly decide your future. So holding those things and taking every single detail seriously is now where this starts. And so with our first trip going down to Florida, going on the road, I'm actually really excited about having a road game as our first game. I was thinking about it earlier today. I think we typically do, and it just limits the distractions. We're together. We're doing it together. We're in a new place in a hotel. I feel like, frankly, like I was a weird team that we thrive on the road. So doing that in that setting, I'm super excited for it. And it's crazy that I'm starting my last college soccer season. Yeah. I mean, that's gotta be a whole new batch of emotion. Did you know going into your senior year that you're going to be taking your fifth year? Yeah, I had it planned out. So I was lucky to like not deal with it last year. And so I didn't walk at senior night or anything like that. I'll do all of that this year, which I'm really, really thankful for. But also I'm like, I am going to be an emotional mess. Like even this is such a weird story, but like the Drake coach, like I said, I feel like we play Drake every single semester at this point. Like we know their team well, they know us well. Their coach comes and, you know, helps out at RID camps and scouts players. So like our player, us as players are familiar with them. She came up to me after the game and she was like, are you on like your seventh year now or something like this? She's like, when are you going to leave Iowa? And I was like, ah, like I got to Iowa in January of 2019 because I graduated high school early. And then now I'm wow. studying for my fifth year. So been in the city for a decently long time now. And so the emotions that'll go into the season will be unprecedented. Yeah. Wow. Do you know when your guys' senior night is? Yeah, September 3rd. So actually early. Um, typically they're in October. So to have them the first week of September, pretty crazy. So it's on our SEMO game, which for me, honestly, is a little bit of fun because we're playing SEMO and being from Missouri, a little bunch of girls that played for my club that know me really well are on that team. So just to have some old girls from growing up be at my senior night is a weird twist of things but yeah that game is definitely going to show a lot of tears for me <laughs> fair enough I mean that's that adds a little bit more you know it's always going to be special but having them there you know that's got to be a little bit extra there so that's really really exciting you said mentioned that was early this year ours is Sunday ours is against Bowling Green we're starting right off right off with senior night okay Jordan obviously we've talked a lot about preseason everything that means we're starting regular season soon, but you don't really start school yet. So how does that look like for you guys? Um, Yeah, we don't start school until August 28th. So right when we get back from our Colorado trip, we'll be heading into the school year as well. So yeah, yeah, we got some, we got a bit of time to kind of figure it out. Not too much, but I'm definitely taking every minute, you know, away from the classroom. We are enjoying it until that all starts because, you know, the academic portion when that all rolls in adds a whole new layer to college soccer you know, balancing the actual student part with the athlete. Um, but you guys start earlier. So how about, how does yeah, that work? So for us, it's a bit, I, I don't want to say a more normal transition, but I've never thought about the transition where preseason ends, but school doesn't start. Because for us, it always has. Preseason will go like right now, it's still happening until Thursday. Like you said, it's preseason. Thursday happens. Well, we have Thursday, Sunday, we start school Monday. 
So for us, it kind of flows. There is no like week where you're not in preseason, but you're not in school. So like, I never actually even thought about that aspect for other people, which is weird to think about for me. And we can get into this whole school soccer balance at a whole different time. I'm not worried about school because I already graduated. So I'm just chilling a bit, um, but I hate to flex on that one. But yeah, so that'll be, it's crazy yeah. that like everyone's with school and all that stuff. Cause like Jordan said, that adds a whole nother factor, which we will dive very, very deep into, I'm sure in another episode. Yeah, that'll that'll be a whole podcast. <laughs> we can talk about it. It definitely definitely adds a layer to the, to everything. But we actually had some exciting stuff on the Michigan State side. We're still talking about preseason here. The rankings came out for Big Ten Conference. You had three teams hit the top twenty five, I believe, were released for the United Soccer Coaches. And then we had a couple individuals get recognized. Justina Gaynor in the midfield, Regan Cox as our defender. So. That was really, really exciting to see on our end. You know, also, well, Big Ten, you have that little bit of rivalry to see uh, Penn State and... Northwestern, right behind you at 18. Yes, and Northwestern in those stops. You know, obviously we joke about this rivalry all the time between me and Jordan, but at the end of the day, Big Ten cheers on Big Ten as long as we're not playing each other. We are so excited to see our Big Ten opponents uh, get really high in the ranking. Of course, we got a bit of a chip on our shoulder ready to come for them with that target on their back that they've now put. So graciously... Also, side note, huge shout out to Justina Gaynor, who not only got recognized as midfielder, but was a Soccer East United mentor for Girls Soccer Network. Also, Girls Soccer Network ties. We love her at GSN. So super excited to see her get that recognition. What are your thoughts on rankings, Jordan? Like, what does that mean to you to be ranked number 17 preseason coming in? Yeah, I think for last year's team, that's really, really exciting because that's what it's based on. You know, is everything we did last year. We have a whole new team going into this next season, 15 out of 31 are new faces. So we haven't really done anything yet. You know, it's, it's not our kind of award that we, we gained, but it's really, really exciting to finally see Michigan state kind of get the respect that we think we deserved. And we worked hard to get, we had a stint of some bad years, you know, before we came in two years ago, we finished fourth last year. We had a really amazing year. We broke almost every single school record, so to finally get kind of that recognition and respect for that is really exciting. But in that same breath, it adds a target on your back. You know, everyone's going to know who Michigan State is now. They kind of have that date circled as you're going into the season ranked. That win means more for your or RPI or whatever it is as you go into your NCAA tournament. And we can get into how all that works later, too. But whole point system. I don't even, I don't really get it as a player, but I, I'm sure you understand it a little bit more. It definitely has a target on your back. So mixed emotions as you get it. It's exciting, but it doesn't mean anything yet. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. I love that. Obviously, congratulations. And it'll be so interesting to see how things transpire throughout the year. Of course, in a few days, the preseason all big 10 conference rankings will come out so once those do i'm sure we'll address it a bit before we wrap up jordan we have a few questions that we would love to answer from our submitting soccerista's as always please know that you can submit questions to us whether contacting both jordan or i personally on our instagrams or reaching out through dm at girls soccer network at all times we love to answer your questions we want to answer your questions question number one jordan are you a superstitious person and if so what is your biggest soccer superstition Ah, I'm, I'm saying medium superstitious, you know, Z on our team. I think she's very superstitious where you have the whole like splitting the pole thing. Like I've never even heard of that until I got here and she has like our whole thing going, but I do, I do have like a pregame kind of ritual and I don't like to change it. So I am superstitious a little bit in that way, just where I have, you know, I wear my little Nike thin black headband I've tried to get rid of it you know every time I try to get rid of it I play like crap so the Nike headband is there to stay I wrap my wrist I have to drink my coffee right before I leave for the game I have my little headphones where I go into my own music before we get into everything and then you know like 10 minutes in whole team's going crazy turn off our lights we have our little disco party thing going on so I have my I have my superstitions my fair amount but uh you know, nothing too crazy. How about you? I, I would say I'm very similar to you. I have a very traditional pregame flow, but there's a couple things that for me cannot change. Number one, ever since I was a sophomore in high school, I started this. And it's the same. Before every soccer game, I call my mom and we scream the song, I Got a Feeling by the Black Eyed Peas. 
Um, yeah, pregame hard yeah. song. For some reason, I have to call my mom. There's like a vivid memory of my sophomore year in high school. We like jammed to the car on the way to a game. I played really well and it stuck. And so now it's just my mom and I's thing. And then my other really weird one that I get bullied for a lot is I actually have the same shin guards that I wore since I was about 11 years old. And they are no. Velcro. So I do rock the Velcro shin guards. <laughs> As a fifth year in oh. college soccer, I rock the Velcro shin guards. I love the Velcro shin guards. I can't tell you the last time I washed them. It definitely wasn't while I was in college. And we're just, we're sticking oh. with it. I can smell them from here. Do they have the ankle thing? No, they go over the ankle. Sam, that's <laughs> awful. I feel like they're definitely growing something on them. Um, But they, they got to stay. Works, it works, but... That's what we're owning it. I guess y'all, anyone listening, feel free to DM me and roast me. It's fair. I deserve it. I will submit pictures. There is very clear photos. You can see the Velcro through the sock. But guess what? I've never been caught once addressing my shin guards during a game. So still after all this time, somehow I do not know how. Uh, that's impressive. That's Shout impressive. out to the manufacturers of those. I know. Where's my NIL deal? I actually Googled them when NIL dropped. And I was like, I got to get an NIL deal for this brand. Like, let's go. The brand is out of business. So really sad day. Um, these shit guys better last me because I do not have backups. <laughs> Dang, that's going to be a sad day. If there will be there. Just you wait. There will be a service. Oh, <laughs> shout out to all the 10 teams that are playing Sam. Get some scissors. Sneak in there. <laughs> Too good, too good. Okay, and the last question submitted is, do you have like a life quote or a mantra that you live by? Not really, if I'm being honest. Uh, free flowing, free spirited. I'll have to to think of them and get back to you next week. Then I'm like, oh my God, I say that all the time, but mine is blank at the moment. I would say mine is, I love the quote of the man in, the man in the Arena by Theodore Roosevelt, all about being willing to be vulnerable and put yourself in the arena, even though that you'll have the people on the outsiders judging you for everything you're doing. But as long as you're willing to be brave and be vulnerable in doing that, that's true. That's true success, even if you may fail. So I love that mantra going into college soccer. Definitely something that has hit me hard and stuck with me. Well, Jordan, good luck with everything. We have Cincinnati and Bowling Green. Big games for you guys. So excited to see how you guys do. We will be dropping this on Thursday, so tune into our games tonight, ready to go. And then on Sunday, there'll be various ways on how to do that throughout the season. We'll keep people updated on certain timeframes of what that might look like. As always, follow us, follow Girl Soccer Network, anything you might want to do. Good luck to you as well. If you want to get updated with us and our soccer season, follow Michigan State Women's Soccer and Iowa Women's Soccer on Instagram. Thank you, Soccerisas and Soccerisas on. Bye.